Moi, je vais au sol, je vais. Sinon, j'ai pas ce corbeau. Pas ce corbeau. Moi, pas ouais, ouf. Je regrette que c'est dans ces coins de ça que nous, ouais. Mais comme pasteur, se prier, prier que le Seigneur vous conforte vous, vous fortifie vous. And all of you, members of the family, I am thankful to be here with you. And also thankful that you do know that I am a member of the family. And every time I have the opportunity to be with you, I have the great privilege of being here, Pastor Mark Edouard. I am thankful that the Lord has brought you this far. Um, every time I thought of you as well, I always wonder how Pastor Jove feels about you. And um, I know he is uh, a man who always encourage the next generation to stand up for the Lord and seeing you um, going strong in the ministry and knowing that the church is also going forth. I know he rejoices in all that and now he's rejoicing again. Uh, many of you probably know that I know Pastor Jovet for about 30 years. Um, when Pastor De Copin called me and I asked myself, what can I say about Pastor Jovet? He is my elder and I have learned to respect him and admire him. Um, we had good times together. Time before when I got married, um, then after, very good moment to cherish and especially the advice that I received from him when I was yet a young man, um, going back and forth to preach and received his invitation to come to the church. Mark Edouard was much younger at that time. Uh, many of you probably, uh, many of us actually were much younger. But immediately when I began to pray and think about what should I say today, it comes to my mind, Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. As the perfect verse in my mind that will really eulogize Pastor Jovin, the text says, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And in thinking about my address to you, I find myself reflecting on this song as well that is called the Song of the Beloved, the Servant Song. And it goes this way. We are pilgrims on the journey. We are Christians on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. I will hold the Christ light for you in the nighttime of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you and speak the words you long to hear. I will weep when you are weeping. When you laugh, I will laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we see this journey through. When we sing to God in heaven, we will know such harmony. Born of all, with none together of Christ's love and agony. In many ways, this has been part of my experience and Christian journey with Pastor Jove. This has been the inheritance that he left behind. Any one of you who knows about um, Pastor Jove, you can easily testify. You can see how his life reflects what the servant song is really saying. How it outlines a progression of legacy, of faith. Pastor Jove is one who affects individuals during critical and crucial times. The Bible talks about Abel, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Rehab, Gibeon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel. The prophets are all commended for their faith in Hebrews chapter 11. And when I read these words again together with the song of the beloved, I could not help but think about Pastor Jove's journey 
and the one that I have learned to admire. It says, all of these, speaking of those men that I just cited, died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. And now, as you know, without any exaggeration, and as far as human imperfection is understood, you can say that Pastor Jovin is commended for his faith. He had lived a good life. He had lived his life, and he lived his legacy as well. And I can honestly say that Pastor Jovin left us with a legacy as well. Not only he lived his legacy, but he left a legacy for us. Pastor Jovin's life tells a story, and it is that story that went on and that will continue to go from one generation to the next. I became aware of Pastor Misne, Joseph Misne Jovin back in 1989 when my fiance then Sister Carla joined Bethesda Baptist Church. She came from Haiti, and I said, well, you have to find a church. And then she said, there is a friend who invited her to a church, and she said she liked it. And she said she liked the pastor. And I said, who is this person? She said, Pastor Jovin. Now, the moment she said Pastor Jovin, anyone who is linked to Bolos, you will immediately get the connection. Because those folks from Bolos who were at the Ecole University de Abib, the stories continue and move on. And it's like you hear the story about one, it's like the story about the other, because they're all interconnected. The stories about Pastor Jovin were stories about his life, his preparation for ministry, his ministerial journey how he presided over so many different weddings and, and also funerals. And then it really typifies this uh, journey. Pastor Jouvin presided over my wedding. I met him um, for the first time, I think back in 1989, but 1986 is when his name began to surface because that was when I entered Ecole Evangelique de la Bible. And all these pioneers before us, we were told about them. Pastor Tony Joseph, the late Tony Joseph, was the one who came right after Pastor Joven left Akaye. And that's the reason his name was on everybody's mind. And when I said to you that Pastor Joven lived a legacy and left a legacy, I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about wealth that he left behind or how much stuff he owned and what he left behind for his children, for Billy, for Tima, um, for Ernst, Sinot, Kishner. I'm not sure that there is a bank account mm -hmm. that is left uh, for them because I did not know Pastor Jovin as a millionaire living in Boston. Uh, as far as I know, he was a pastor and he was a very simple man who lived a simple life. But what he left behind for his wife, for the children, for the 11 grandchildren and the three great grandchildren is his legacy. He could have done much more with regard to his physical life, but he had deemed them not essential. And this is the story of his life since he was in Haiti, a young man, 16 years old, 
is when he decided that he was going to enter a call of Vashti Gurabi to prepare himself for ministry. Yes, he could have done a lot. He came in this country, he was pretty much of younger age, and he had the strength that he could work tirelessly to earn himself a good living. But he understood that these things will fade away within time. And his legacy was about his journey with God. His legacy was about the impact that he wanted to be intentionally make on each and every one of us who come or who have an encounter with him. Bethesda, when I first was introduced to Bethesda, I was amazed to see, and I remember every time when Pastor Jovin is going to greet the church. La paix bon Dieu avec vous. And then just like you do, perhaps you didn't say anything, and then he said again, La paix bon Dieu avec vous. And then since you didn't say anything, or at least this time it's a little better, then he will say it again. And then after saying it the third time, and he will say, Bethesda, c'est la maison de miséricorde. And I never forgot that. Because this is the man God had called to open up this church in this area. At that time, uh, when the church was opened, there was First Haitian, which was a vibrant, <coughs> growing church. There was New Jerusalem, which was growing at that time. And then there was BMBC, Boston Missionary Baptist Church. And then there was Bethesda. Baptist Church. So it was not a church without significance, without meaning, great importance. It was a church which responsibility, its ministry, was basically there to serve a community. And we had at that time a young, vibrant youth ministry that was growing with Mark Edouard Sinat and um, Pastor Gentil who was also there working with Getty and Fatin, if you remember. Um, so it was really a live church at that time. So every story that I was told about Pastor Jovin since the time when he left the uh, seminary to his first uh, responsibility to lead, and when he finally met his wife, when he was supposed to be in mission preaching, but he was also fishing. Um, so he met his wife and the children as well. Led me to conclude that he was someone who was far-sighted, especially for the advancement of the church. He has one testimony. Everyone, you can leave me here, call Pastor Abed um, in Call Spring Valley, New York, because that's where Pastor Jovem probably is mostly known after Boston. Um, the story is the same. Uh, when you talk about his younger brother, Martinez Jovin, the story is basically the same. So when I reflect on my personal time and journey with Pastor Jovin, every time when he invited me to come and to preach, well, he would always attempt to tell me what to say, uh, what I should focus on, because we always ask him, what is the goal of coming? So I would be coming to lead seminars, but I read his legacy exactly the same way. He intended that legacy to be read. He was first and foremost a moral, but more mostly important, a good spiritual leader. He was not upfront. He was not in your face type of person, but the little time he spent with you, you cannot come out and say you are not in the presence of a man of God. Mm -hmm. Pastor Jovin was truly an icon. I was thinking and say of Pastor Jovin many times ago, I, in my reflection with Pastor Abed about Pastor Jovin, I said, if Pastor Jovin was a pastor in the American community, he would be known as a big deal. Not that in the Haitian community is not a big deal, but in the American community, he would be bigger because there would be many books written about him. There would be somebody 
putting together a biography book about him. He was trained in the things of God and he committed himself to love the church, to love the people of God. He instruct others about the things of God. And when you meet different people, they will tell you that he is one who taught young and old to love the church, to respect God, to live for God every day, every hour, minutes, and seconds of their life. So in conclusion, let me just say what um, Pastor Yucaldi quoted in his prayer. Pastor Jovan, like the Apostle Paul, has fought the good fight. He has finished the race. He has kept the faith. And from now on, the crown of justice is his. He now takes his place in the history firmly as a spiritual warrior, clothing in the armor of God. These are not cliches. This is the reality that all of us who know Pastor Joven that we lived. And we can say, yes, he was a role model to all of us. As one who had faithfully defended the truth of the gospel, yes, Pastor Joven had finished the race and showing in the process the fact that he was neither disqualified nor disheartened in the marathon of life and ministry. He lived it, he was successful. And I thank God for the legacy of good deeds, acts of kindness, loving service that Pastor Jovan left behind whenever and wherever he went some places. And I thank God that I was also one of the beneficiaries. 1991, he performed my wedding and I remember he said to me that he knows that I know the Bible backwards, up and down. Does it have much to say to me? But he said, serve God. And that's what I told him that I would do. I would continue to serve God. When I was called from Dallas Theological Seminary to come here to Boston to uh, join Pastor Abed at Tabernacle Baptist, I called him and we had some time together and his time and praying with me and he said, I know you will be successful in ministry because you love God. That's the man that we are here to celebrate his life. Unfortunately, we say we are mourning. Yes, it is indeed true because he has passed away, but it is a life that we are celebrating. And no, it's not the crowd that will make the celebration what it ought to be. It is rather what we have lived, the legacy that he has left behind for us. So beloved brothers and sisters of Bethesda, and all of you family members, and all of you the grandchildren, um, I'm sure you also had the opportunity to know your grandfather. I hope the same impact that he had made on the life of his children, his immediate children, that he had made the same impact in your life as well. On behalf of my wife and Tabernacle Baptist congregation, Pastor Alexander and the other um, pastors of the church, we pray that the Lord brings solace to your heart at this time. And as you know, Pastor Jove is not lost. He's gone to be with his Savior, and there he will be waiting for each and every one of us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen.